So Jonathan, you are the VP of Communications for Solar City, which I, I'm certain means that you're going to be able to communicate all kinds of interesting stuff to us. Um, I'll start with a real basic question. State of solar. Solar is hot right now. It's growing like crazy, but give us a nutshell of just how fast it really is growing and what kind of percentage of our electricity it's currently meeting and where we're going to be in the near future. It's, it's growing very quickly. So uh, Solar City is, is, is coming close to doubling each year. I think the broader industry growth is, is somewhere between 40 and 60 percent annually if you look across all sectors. Uh, so, you know, solar is, it's, it's a tangible thing. Um, it's, it's not an app that can go viral you know, and be spread digitally and become ubiquitous you know, next month. Uh, but there, there's an upside to that as well. It, it drives a tremendous amount of economic activity and job growth. Uh, distributed solar creates more jobs per megawatt hour than any other source of energy. So it, it's a, it, there are a lot of positive things that are happening in solar. When, but when you start small, when you start at half a percent, you double, you get to one percent. You double that, you get to two percent. Uh, and so on and so forth. So we're, we're starting to get to that tipping point, um, but but we're we're not quite there yet. We're still less less than one percent one percent adoption nationwide. The the key drivers are in place though for for more growth. So we can offer solar electricity at a discount to the retail cost of power in in a growing number of locations. We just announced our 15th state, Nevada, a few weeks ago. Uh, those 15 states have about half the U.S. population. So, you know, the, the fundamental driver is if, if you can give the, the customer the chance to use cleaner power and pay less for it, that's something that a lot of them are interested in. And so that, that driver is gonna, it's gonna drive more and more growth. Okay, good. Now, uh, back to the numbers, 40% a year, that's huge. I mean, that we're, we're, if that continues, if that's actually sustainable, we're over 1% in no time. Is that realistic or are we going to sort of slow a little bit given what we're able to install and produce and all that sort of stuff? I think it is realistic. I mean, we, we did our first national poll a few months ago. We polled 1,400, we, we partnered with Zogby Analytics and polled 1,400 homeowners nationwide. One of the more interesting stats from the poll is that 62% of, of homeowners polled said they're interested in solar for their own homes. You know, there have been a lot of solar polls that say, do you support solar or do you think solar is positive for the environment? Typically 90% of people say yes. There's tremendous support for solar. But we asked them the very specific question, would you do it for your own home? And 62% said yes. And that's a very significant statistic when you consider that there, there are about 500,000 or less than 500,000 PV installations in the United States today. There are over 100 million households, you know, probably 60 million owner-occupied households uh, or housing units. So if you, you know, that gives you a sense of the addressable market. There's a tremendous amount of interest. You know, two out of three homeowners are interested in getting it for their own homes. You know, less than 1% have it today. So one of the things we're trying to do is, is making it more accessible. Uh, so we partnered with, with Best Buy uh, about a month or two ago to make uh, solar available through Best Buy stores. We have a, an existing relationship with Home Depot, uh, a very similar relationship. Uh, we're, we're making solar available. You know, we're selling it online, you know, looking at the home on Google Earth and talking to the customer over the phone, um, making it available through partners like Honda uh, and BMW. So uh, we're, we're, we're working on ways to make it more and more accessible in more locations. And, but, but the key is really undercutting the cost of power. So when you can offer someone the chance to pay less for solar electricity than they pay for utility power, they, they get very interested in that. And, and as the retail cost of power goes up, the, the grid is aging, you know, you've got finite fuel sources that you know, the, 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 the cost can be volatile. So the retail cost of power tends to go up the costs of solar are coming down through operational improvements, you know, te technology cost reductions, economies of scale, reductions in the cost of capital. So those those two those two uh, those two costs are moving in the right direction to, to increase future growth. Right. Now, how do you structure that 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 deal, so to speak, so mm -hmm. that I can get it on my roof and make and, and keep something affordable? So we, we give the customer options. You can purchase the system uh, if, if you want to do that. We also allow customers to install the panels for free and pay for the electricity uh, at, a, at a rate per kilowatt hour. That's really the way that people are used to buying electricity. Uh, so you know we find that consumers don't necessarily want to change their behavior. Uh, if you can give them a way to, to, to do something that doesn't require them to change their behavior that much and also delivers another benefit, you know, cost savings in this case, that, that's something that far more can get interested in. So solar traditionally, you know, the upfront cost really made it a product for 
a certain type of homeowner. You know, there was if you had enough equity in your home, if you could write a, a large check, it would deliver you a great return on that investment over time. But not all homeowners were comfortable with that. So if we we wanted to give them a way to uh, a way to adopt solar that that allowed them to save money from day one, and that that's something that's it's it's opened up solar to to far wider set of homeowners. The CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commission, did a study in 2012 taking a look at the growth of solar in, in zip codes of, of varying incomes. And they found that, th that by far the greatest growth, or the largest growth in California was occurring in the medium and lower income zip codes. And they attributed it to you know, this phenomenon that, that you, can now, you can now adopt solar with no upfront cost and pay only for the electricity, only for the power the systems produce. That's something, you know, whether it's $50, $100, $150 a month, replacing that utility cost, and in many cases lower than that utility cost, that's something that a lot of homeowners can do.